Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking. Pretty exciting day. As you can tell, brand new Stetson. So that's pretty cool. Also brand new gun. Pretty excited about it. Little different format video today. I'm just going to be shooting off some tripods. We're going to keep it nice and simple. Nice and short probably as well. Um, so hopefully you guys like the format. But nonetheless, wanted to get out here just real quick and I don't know, had the itch to shoot this brand new gun and didn't really plan on it until this morning. So we're just going to go ahead and go for it. But this here is another one of those PCC type pistols, 9mm. Break that down, pistol caliber carbine for PCC, but legally this is not a carbine, it's a pistol. So PCC type pistol. Think I'm clear, legally. Anyway, so if it wasn't obvious from some of the controls here, it's very AR-15-esque as far as the controls. You have your charging handle here, it locks back on the last round, except the uh, bolt release is a little different. It's like this little knob here, so throw it down right here. But other than that, just the trigger guard, the pistol grip, the fire selector, and B by the way, which is pretty cool, but it's very AR-15 feeling once you're behind it, so that's kind of nice. It's a running joke in the gun world, but yes, it does actually take Glock mags. Uh, it comes with two of these that are not made by Glock, but we're going to try a couple different ones, maybe some actual Glock mags, ETS, and whatever it comes with, but yeah, compatible with 9mm Glock mags, so you might have some of those already. I should mention real quickly, it didn't come looking like this, so this is one of those really cool triangle folding braces that takes a little bit of oomph, there it goes. Um, so yeah, nice and short, but I should mention it comes with like this end plate that actually has threads for a buffer tube, and initially I did put a buffer tube on there, and I thought, you know, it's going to work. But if it doesn't actually need a buffer, buffer spring, and all that stuff for its function, I'd rather not have it just so I could fold it off. Um, and so UTS USA actually sent me this little Picatinny rail adapter, and I like it much better that way so I could put these little folders on there. So I like that better. Um, it didn't come like that. I figured I'd mention, but that is an accessory you could get. That's about it for my run through. Overall manual of arms, like I said, charging handle, fire selector, mag release right here where you would expect it with an AR. The only thing not AR like is the bolt release, which is up here. Okay. So pretty easy manual of arms. Um, US designed, US made, all that cool stuff. MSRP is about 850 bucks, but online I'm seeing it go for around 700 or so. So for the money, kind of cool. Ignore that plane flying over. Anyway, uh, I noticed it's pretty darn thin. It actually kind of gives me a little bit of the vibes from the DBX 5.7. Pretty light, pretty thin, pretty wieldable. I say that without shooting it, so I think we should just shoot it. Uh, we're gonna start with just five rounds with the Glock mag. We're just gonna get through all the mags real quick just to make sure the compatibility is there. Just five rounds real quick. Not sure if the EOTech sighted in, but we're about to find out. Little low. Um, it's kind of snappy, but uh, it's quick, so it lands on target pretty nice. So there's the Glock mag. Let's go ahead and try out an ETS mag, five of them. And then the mag it came with, so far all good. There we go. Little function test. All's good with the mags. All right, first impressions real quickly. I'm shooting some 115 grain, full speed, bellum, ammo, whatever. Um, kind of snappy, like I said, but it lands nice and quick, so it's back on target. So might try to speed it up a little bit, but yeah, it's got a little bit of snap to it. That's why I'm looking forward to suppressing it and then adding some subsonic, so I'd be kind of cool. All right, there's a stove pipe. Um, Ooh, it just seated way back in there. What is that? What is that? The next round kind of fell way back in there. Once again. All right. Uh-oh. Okay. Ran through the last bit of that mag, no problem. Let's go with some 147 grain subsonics, even though there's no suppressor. And I don't know. Let's just see what happens. All right, I've just got 12 rounds of 147 subsonic from Lawman, Lawman Tactical, something like that. Um, trying to run them out here pretty quick. All right, well, it's happier with those. While I have a good understanding on the recoil impulse and all that, let's just go straight into a grain power Strybog. Um, and see how that feels. All right, and here's a Grand Power Strybog. Now, if I was wanting to be more fair, I should have compared it with the SB9A1 direct blowback, but this is the A3 roller delayed blowback. So it should be quite a bit flatter. <coughs> that was a voice crack. Yeah, sure enough, it's much, much flatter. It's also larger, the whole gun, but. All 
All right, well, again, probably not totally fair because I was direct blowback, this is a roller, but yeah, this thing feels like it's got 30% the recoil. All right, what about another comparison? Let's go way up in price. Let's go to a CMMG Banshee in nine millimeter. I've only shot this thing maybe once or twice. I made a video in the winter, I think. I don't know, I remember it was really cold. So remember I like it a lot, so uh, let's go back to it. Oh yeah, no, this is really nice. Uh, this has got the readily delayed blowback system from CMMG and it feels very nice. So I'm gonna try this little guy. This is my Gimtech Lunar 9 with the short stack on it, just as short as it could get. All right, ran through the 115 grains, uh, no problem. Now it's suppressed, if that makes a difference. Let's go ahead and try some 147 from uh, Freedom Munitions, the Hush line. That should be pretty darn quiet. Well, it's quieter. Um, I'll be honest though, I thought the snappiness would be tamed a little bit more than it was. It's a lot better, of course, but uh, I don't know. When I run that same ammo through a suppressed CMMG Banshee or that Strybog, it becomes like a 22. This still has a little bit of that snap. You might be able to see that once I throw it in slow motion. So let's do that again at 120 frames a second. Maybe you guys can tell what I'm talking about. Damn. Okay, well, scratch what I said earlier. Suppressed subsonic, the Strybog SB9A3 takes the kick for how flat it is. Damn. All right. Tell you what, it hasn't had a single failure with the Hush ammo um, with the suppressor. I don't think it would matter if I took the suppressor off either, from my guess. But, uh, I know it seems like I don't like this thing. I actually do. It just seems kind of picky right now. But then again, to be fair, I haven't cleaned it. It's brand new. But, you know, I'm just going to give you my impressions as they come in. Um, I actually still really like this gun. I know we had some hiccups I'm going to show in this video because why not? I'm going to keep it transparent. Um, but given how it just ran just now and how it's been running with this combo and that ammo, it's pretty cool. But yeah, as far as I could have brought just a, a whole slew of stuff to compare it with, but that would have taken too long. Strybog and Banshee were the first ones to pop in my head. Uh, Banshee just is more expensive, but it feels it as well. Um, suppressed or unsuppressed, it's a lot of fun. The Strybog, unsuppressed and suppressed, also a lot of fun. More so in the realm of this price point, but in particular the A3 with the suppressor with subsonic, flattest recoiling gun here, so that's pretty cool. But then again, this one's the most compact, so I don't know, some different ways to weigh it all. That does it for this video. Nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you guys next time. Take care.